What's going on, guys? We are with a very special guest today. He is the screenwriter of American Ultra, Chronicle. He's an entrepreneur, a dreamer. Yeah. Thank you for making time for us, Max Landis. Thank you so much. You, I, I feel like a dreamer, a renaissance man. I feel like this is a nice way of saying I'm a male prostitute. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> a, anything for money, you will do. Yeah, anything, You've man. done it. Um, Welcome to being a screenwriter. You came on Movie Fights recently, and uh, you blew the doors off Movie Fights. You were- so, Some would say maybe too much. I had a little bit too much enthusiasm, but I had so much fun. Haters gonna hate. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so um, you had a lot of fun, and you pitched us an awesome dream sequel for Man of Steel 2. Do you want to give us any preface for this? What inspired it, or your uh, thoughts, uh, your history with Superman? Yeah, I, I've... I've loved the character of Superman since I was very little. I've talked about Superman way too much on the internet and in public. I have my my li I'm literally living a dream right now because on in November the first issue of a seven issue run called American Alien, which is my Superman comic, comes out, and it's really wow. it's me putting my money where my mouth is. The thing the thing I pitched was off the top of my head. Yes, and I feel like it ultimately addressed a lot of things that might be looked at in Dawn of Justice. Uh, Andy told me, like, Batman's in it. And yeah. I was like, my Superman sequel, in my head, would never include Batman. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I guess I gotta try to fit in everybody. So uh, I, hope you, I hope you enjoy it. I did enjoy it. Let's take a look at it. In the wake of destruction of over half of Metropolis at the end of Man of Steel, Superman is a universally reviled figure. Clark Kent, a small town boy who had never even been in a fist fight before he was attacked by a military man and forced to decimate a city he loved, has terrible PTSD and has given up being Superman. He gets the shakes every night. He's trying to date Lois Lane, but the fact that he has a secret that she is doing a huge piece on is being like very reviled about the idea that Superman was ultimately a negative thing and that the destruction, you know, it's 9-11. It's 10-9-11. Clark moves home. He is miserable, but he has to do one more assignment before he leaves his job at the Daily Planet. And we get to really see this guy. I mean, he's living in New York post 9-11, basically. Everyone on the street has graffiti saying like, Superman's incredible, Superman sucks. You know, like everyone also doesn't understand because it's the age of the internet that Superman and Zod are even necessarily two different people. Keep in mind the first time the world saw that Superman suit, was f***ing him destroying the city. So for all they know, they were just two random aliens and that haunts Clark every night because he thinks of himself as a man and as an American and as a good guy and that tortures him. He has to do one more thing. He has to go interview this billionaire investor named Lex Luthor. He goes to interview him. He doesn't understand why he's been chosen. He's a rookie interviewer. Lex Luthor is a sharky investor. He treats his employees like shit. He's basically an evil Elon Musk. But when you're sitting there with him, and he's Tom Hanks, he seems kind of great. He's like, to Henry Cavill, like, you know, you and I have an image problem. He's like, I'm just a reporter. He goes, no, you're not, you're Superman. You think it was hard for me to figure out who you were? But I think I can repair your image. We're gonna start branding you. You are just one man. You'll never know where you're needed and when, but I am a corporation. I can send you where people need you most. I will have eyes and ears open for people in need but I need you to do favors for me. I need you to repair facilities around the world. I think I can make you look like the greatest humanitarian figure of all time. Now, is that what you want to do? Do you want to help people and inspire people with hope? He's like, yes, so it starts. And suddenly we're getting into all the stuff that we didn't get to see in Man of Steel. Him saving people, him being sent places. Lex Luthor is sponsoring Superman. It's incredible. He suddenly he has a 60 Minutes interview. Everyone starts to love Superman like they do in the comics and understand that what happened in Metropolis was a mistake. That's when someone breaks into Clark's home. It's a guy in a bad costume. You need to listen to me. You can't trust Luther. Or it, it's it's the Warner Brothers movie, so you need to listen to me. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? You've broken into my home. You're you're the Batman. You're the vigilante from Gotham. That's right. Listen. It's part of a bigger plan. He has bad, bad intentions. But if you listen to me, I can help you out of this. If you work for me instead of Luther, as an agent of Batman, we can pull together the Earth's greatest heroes. We then enter the bulk of the movie, which is Luther forcing Superman to track down and capture the members of the Justice League, all the other metahumans. And they seem scary. The Flash's powers are out of control. Wonder Woman kills lots of people. 
Green Arrow is another friggin' vigilante. The Martian Manhunter is a monster. And by the time you get to the third act, he has captured all of them. And that's when Luther reveals what you've created is a sovereign force more powerful than any that has ever existed on Earth. This team could take down any army. No nation in the world could stand against us. And Superman is like, I thought we were doing this to protect the world. I'm naive and sweet. He's like, your next job is to take out Batman. And he's like, oh, oh. Okay, so he goes to take out Batman because Luther is still sort of on his side, even though he's getting scarier and scarier. He still saved Clark. Lex Luthor has saved Superman from being a pariah. And as things grow in emotional intensity, by the end of the last act, Superman with Batman goes rogue because Bruce Wayne basically says, you didn't give away my identity. I know you know there's something wrong with Luther. If you want to inspire people, do what I do. Inspire by fear, scare Luther because that's what he's making you do. And Superman realizes, I don't need to beat Lex Luthor. I can't condemn him. I can't testify in a stand. I can't say who I am. What I need to do is free the Justice League. So the last act of the movie is Batman Superman team up. They free the Justice League, have to fight Luthor. And in one of the coolest sequences in movie history, beautifully, beautifully directed by James Cameron, I'm pulling him off Avatar. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. The Justice League, the Justice League gets into a major fight in a city center with Luther's uh, Luther droids, like the robots. Except the whole time, Superman Clark is like, "They're hitting back! Go save those people! We gotta save these people!" So one member of the Justice League is fighting the Luther droids at a time. There is almost no property damage, and no one is hurt. <laughs> and at the end of it, Superman lands and rips open the Luther droid. And Luther's like, you can't, you can't kill me on TV. You know what? What are you doing? You destroyed half a sit. And then it's a slow pan up, and the city's fine. <laughs> and the Justice League is like walking up behind him, and Luther's like, oh sh. And Superman just goes bink, knocks him out. Justice League now exists. Man of Steel three. I would want to focus on Doomsday. Justice League versus Doomsday. So Max. That was pretty epic. Anything you'd change about that? Anything you want to follow or amend? So, so many things I'd change, but okay. I guess I guess if I could if I could just choose one, it, it would be to make clear that I the actual sequel to My Man of Steel 2 would be called Superman and mm -hmm. would be a movie where he I say doomsday, but to me that's the Justice League movie. And that comes out later gotcha i think i think the sequel in superman i'd want him fighting someone like toy man like do a real superman movie yeah where clark is at work and he has to dun, 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 and like also that'd be pretty cool because we haven't seen those characters yeah. on film before we haven't even seen brainiac yeah we've seen zod twice and we haven't seen brainiac once the truth is is it, it's the most concise sparse uh n least nuanced characters that they use because harder characters like Mr. Sinister, he's harder to pull off. Yeah. And, and you know, Brainiac, if you f it up, mm -hmm. although it, it gives you an opportunity to do the Marvel thing, which is an army of identical gray people. Right. How many, uh, you know, you know why I liked Kingpin on Daredevil? Why is that? Cause he wasn't a f identical gray person. I love Marvel. Oh yeah. Have a villain who can fight the whole team at once mm -hmm. instead of a million villains who can't beat the whole team with a thousand of them. Well, one of the things that uh, interested me and I really liked about your pitch was that they were saving lives and they were kind of cleaning up some of the, uh, the damage from the first film. Mm -hmm. uh, why was that important to you? The Justice League is Mount Olympus. Like in a literal way, it's Mount Olympus. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at the, the archetypes. So I love the idea that no matter who's coming at you, once you see that green dot in the sky and the red blur in the streets and you hear the sonic boom from Superman coming in, you hear the bat wing overhead, you right. see Wonder Woman being taller than everybody. And yeah. you, the second you that happens, you go, oh, well, I guess we're okay. Villains when they're written right, are terrifying. Yes. Even the most minor comic book villain in the real world would make you shit your pants. Oh, yeah. And so the idea that, no, there's a group of people who are going to literally beat the crap out of whoever made you feel scared and being like, oh, thank God, knowing yeah. that it was going to be okay. Wow. And I wanted to capture... You know, they don't really do that in the last Avengers movie, but I wanted to capture that because the Avengers are a paramilitary unit. Mm -hmm. That's what they are. The Justice League are not a paramilitary unit. Right. They're gods. Yeah. Any one member of the Justice League, uh -huh. of the like main seven, 
could easily beat the entirety of the Avengers. I mean, even Thor? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, Thor's going to stand a chance against Superman. Okay. He has a pure heart. He's going to pick up that hammer. Mm -hmm. He's going to shove it up Thor's ass. And then he's going to punt Thor into space. Although, like, I wonder if Thor's... Superman's weak against magic. So I wonder if... I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting, Oh no! I'm uh, getting in my own head No, now. it's fun to go down the rabbit hole with this stuff. Oh, dude, I've been doing it since I was, you know, I used to work at a comic book store and I'd be in the back just, it's so funny because people online, a lot of people like will say stuff like, you know, like you do this and you do that and you have a loud opinion. And I'm just the same 14 year old kid in the back of a comic book store going, listen, Wolverine could technically beat Batman in a fight because there's no way for Batman to Max, stop Wolverine. never lose that magic. Uh, Max Landis, you've been generous with your time. You're welcome here anytime. Thanks for coming by, buddy. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So what is the dream sequel you'd like to see? Give us your pitch in the comments section below. If you have the best dream sequel pitch for the movie of your choice, we're going to send you a Screen Junkies t-shirt. Once again, thanks to Max Landis. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye-bye. To me, the problem with um, Avengers Age of Ultron and with almost every other big movie we saw this year is it always ends the same with them saying, we're going to destroy the world in the next 20 minutes and less. And yeah. they're never going to destroy the world, so who cares?